On today's show, we talk with Stephen Murphy, the CEO of Boom Sports, about the future of their company. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Everywhere you turn, it's the same old sports talk, the same headlines, the same news, and the same boring information. This podcast is here to change all of that. We bring you hot sports takes, winning sports betting strategy and picks, reliable gaming industry news, and breaking interviews with some of the biggest names in sports business. My name is Ryan Noople, and welcome to the Noop Sports Show. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Noop Sports Show. My name is Ryan Noop. I'm your host here each and every time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time and uh, just hearing what we have to say uh, here in this crazy time of the world. Today, I'm joined by a special guest. I have the CEO of Boom Sports, Stephen Murphy, with me on the line. Stephen, are you here? I am. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Man, it's a pl- my pleasure. I really appreciate you giving me some time and... Uh, just uh, getting away from um, daily life a little bit. How are you, uh, how you holding up in this crazy pandemic time uh, of the year? Yeah, doing well. Bunkered into uh, my, my apartment here in New York City with uh, my, my two kids who, are, who I love and who are driving me crazy. So probably like a lot of other people. Yeah, it really gives you uh, kind of a different sense of, uh, I don't know, I mean, I have a little more appreciation for my kids now, but then I also appreciate that time away as well a lot more now that you kind of spend a ton of time. So it, it's been a good thing, but it's also, man, it's like I need, a, I need some balance in my life right now. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, for sure. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So, you know, the, the podcast, the listenership, the people here really have an interest in fantasy sports and in sports betting. A lot of sports betting professionals are probably listening to to this I'd like to hear how you got started um, I guess first a little bit about boom sports and then a little bit about how you got started I guess with it and in the industry sure yeah so boom sports is a five-year-old company uh, we consider ourselves sort of the, the premium game developer and technology provider of the US online gaming industry so we work with several partners including NBC sports Penn National gaming NASCAR barstool um, we work with the XFL during their, their, their return. Um, and so effectively what we do is we build gaming products for, for top tier partners. Um, we started out actually as a fantasy sports company. We still have a fantasy offering, but we, we've evolved into a, a definitely more B2B bigger company uh, since then. That's really cool. Yeah. I I mean, I remember back in the day when you guys started and you were more of a fantasy product. And so uh, transitioning into that B2B, I'm sure is a a different world and and probably a pretty rewarding world working with some of those big companies like that. So how did you actually get started in this? I mean, have you always been interested in this space um, or, you know, how did that come about? Yes, I've always been a big sports fan. I remember my my fifth grade CYO basketball team. I, I dyed my hair a different color and dressed as Dennis Rodman for, <laughs> for an entire season. So proud to say I, I led the league in rebounding that year. Um, but that was that was probably the pinnacle of my athletic career. Uh, but but I was a big I was a big sports fan, and I, I kind of fell into gaming uh, in two thousand eight. So I guess I've been in gaming in one shape or another for for twelve years. Um, I was in Las Vegas, uh, actually, you know, volunteering for the Obama campaign for his first campaign in 08. And I played a little bit of poker on the side as a recreational player, sort of a profitable recreational player, but but certainly not not a pro. And I wound up meeting someone at Card Player Media, Card Player Magazine, and they needed a writer. And so I, I started writing for them. And I've been in the industry ever since. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. I didn't realize you started as a writer. I mean, what we do a lot of is, is writing on our uh, noob, noob side of things. So that's a, uh, oh, I didn't realize that that was where you got your start, but that's cool. How was it living in Vegas? Did you enjoy that, uh, that I guess, lifestyle back then? I did. You know, I, I enjoyed Las Vegas a lot. I lived there for two years, um, you know, close enough. I had a lot of friends in LA, so I'd do the drive, you know, weekends to LA and I, I had a good time there. Good experience there. That's awesome. So Boom Sports. So tell me a little bit about some of the things that are going on now. Some of your big events, some news that you've had. I mean, what's what's in the pipeline right now? Uh, Anything big going on for you guys? Yeah, sure. So our our biggest news was the past month, we just announced our deal with Penn National Gaming. Mm -hmm. So Penn National operates about 40 plus casinos in 19 states. Uh, They're the company with the largest uh, market access effectively in the U S and we, we just announced a deal with them where we'll be building them a series of gaming products. 
And in exchange, we're actually going to get licenses to operate our own mobile sports book and online casino uh, in a handful of US states. So, so for us, this is our first market access deal. Um, and we look forward to, to launching you know, a sports book in the coming probably 12 to 18 months. That's pretty cool. Man, I love your name too. I mean, it's it, it's one of those words that you, you know you just want to say boom all the time. I just love the saying that. Is that is that where that came about when you guys started this company? Was it uh man, what's a good word? Boom. <laughs> what? Yeah, we when we started this in 2015, we uh the actual the full company name is Boom Shakalaka. Oh, uh, even so, better. <laughs> so a nice reference to the old I can't even oh. say it's NBA Jam because I, I I learned that it, NBA Jam actually wound up stealing it from like a, a hip hop song back before then. So it's a, it's been a, it's been a saying that has been legendary for a while and we want to adopt it and honor it. I love it. I love it. Well, that's cool. So you guys are going to be getting kind of a little more market access, getting into that with uh, some of these deals. That's pretty amazing. Um, have you guys seen, I guess, uh, I don't know how to, how to ask this, but in terms of the pandemic going on and, and, you know, a lot of companies are struggling to, to make it right now, how has that affected you guys currently in, in what you're trying to do? Has it slowed you guys down at all? Has it forced you to put pivot into other areas or is it kind of business as usual for you guys through this and you're just really working on growing those relationships and kind of building the, uh, the, the partners that you worked with? Yeah, for the most part, it's business as usual. I mean, it's, it's never quite business as usual with a with sort of a, a, a pandemic and a crisis like this. But for the most part, it's business as usual. Our, our partners um, are sort of long term partners, right? We, mm -hmm. we sign these deals for, for multiple years, and we've got lots of products that we're actually currently building for them. And so so we've just been sort of heads down building products. We're going to have a, a couple new products launch in the next, I would say, three months. Mm. Uh, one for for um, Penn National and their partners at Barstool Sports, uh, and another with a partner that we haven't announced yet. Uh, so, so we've just kind of been heads down working in terms of like how it affects the business. I mean, it definitely, you know, I I tell investors this like it definitely slows down sales cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think everybody, especially on the land based casino market and the the sports team. Their, their business has been crushed by this. And so I think they need to make sure that, that their house is in order before they, before they figure out you know, how and where to invest in online gaming. But if there's one thing this, this sort of crisis has, has taught us is that it's really important to have an online gaming strategy if you're going to be in the sports gaming space. Um, and so I, I expect it to be an area that a lot of people invest in, in the next couple of years. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, it was. It's, it's such a shame too because we had such momentum going in the in the industry. And when I, you know, I say we, I'm talking mainly kind of about the United States sports betting legalization, kind of around that space. There was really a lot of momentum and a lot of things, positive things going on in that. And then when this hit, it was like, oh boy, uh, we're kind of in shock here. What's going on? There's no sports. There's no this. There's no that. Now what? And so. I think a lot of companies are really, like you said, reevaluating and looking at, man, how can we, how can we really capitalize on the mobile side of things when our land-based, you know, uh, operations aren't working or aren't available? I mean, that's we hope that's not going to happen for a long time, but gosh, I mean, what if it does happen again? We got to have a mobile presence. So, um, man, it's uh, definitely interesting times to see here. Yeah, no, I mean, I spent you know two years living in Las Vegas, and you know, I I hope the land-based casino industry recovers as soon as possible, but in all likelihood, it's going to be a long slog back. I mean, mm -hmm. they, the, you know, just the numbers will go down and, and their businesses will be hurting on that, on that side. So, you know, I think that the gaming companies that are going to win in the next five to 10 years are going to be companies that, that really invest in, in mobile gaming. I mean, I think there's, there's no other way around that just because, and, and by the way, I, I wouldn't rule out, the, the big land based heavyweights from from competing in this space. I think they have an advantage in that they've created spectacular experiences, uh, you know, on the in, in sort of the in real person uh, mm -hmm. side of things, and they have some money to invest in this. Uh, but ultimately, they need to they need to bolster their their right net right now is a weakness compared to you know some of the bigger online gaming operators like like the FanDuel's and the DraftKings out there. 
Sure. Man, I can't even imagine the scene in Vegas right now. You know, we're kind of going off topic here, but you living in Vegas and kind of experiencing that um, atmosphere and, and now living in New York City. I think you mentioned that, you know, off the air about how different it is living in New York City during this than it is, you know, any other time. Think about Vegas right now and just the almost like the sad state of that that, that area and, and how it would feel. I mean, it's such an electric city when things are right. I just can't imagine it now. It almost has to feel like a ghost town and very depressing um, yeah, in that I'm, city. I'm sure it does. But I will say, you know, I lived in Vegas in 08 during the housing crash. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there were entire neighborhoods in Las Vegas that were abandoned. Uh, mm-hmm. People, you know, and, and, you know, 08 wasn't that long ago. And, you know, the city recovered, you know, the, the area recovered and it became even more vibrant than it ever has. So, you know, I, I think they do have some difficult times uh, facing them, especially in the, in the next year. But I'm, I'm long term bullish on Las Vegas. Agreed. I do agree with you there. It's just it's just sad to see right now when I see the pictures of it and all of that. And I'm just itching to get a Vegas trip in. in and uh, I don't see that happening anytime very yeah, soon. I agree. <laughs> well, cool. Um, let me know. What is some of the, I guess futuristic stuff that we can look for. I know you talked about, you know, some news that you have now talked about a few games, a few partnerships, but is there, I don't know, any longer term vision you guys have, or is it just kind of continuing to plug away at what you're doing? Um, You know, any longer term, I guess, strategies or anything that you guys are looking to get into as more States come on board or as more um, companies get into this space. Are you just looking to partner with them? Tell us a little bit about that strategy for you guys. Sure. On, on the product side, you know, we're looking forward to really introducing new concepts mm-hmm. uh, to the sports betting market and to the, the U.S. market. So our experience, so we've been in casino gaming, most of us at our company for, for over a decade. And we wound up, you know, building uh, at the time one of the highest grossing games on Facebook and one of the, you know, some of the best performing casino content for Las Vegas casinos uh, in our previous company. And so we, we have a lot of experience building hit games. And so one thing that we're going to try to do when we launch our sportsbook technology and platform is to introduce new ways to bet. And so mm-hmm. I can't go into like the, the specific details of, of what we're building, but, but it's in the vein of like, you know, when you think about points bet and how they, they have a, a, yep. a different kind of way to bet, we're, we're, int- we're going to introduce several new topics like that, that I think will give current bettors um, a new way to bet. And it will actually be what our hope is attractive enough to, to introduce, you know, brand new sports fans that may have been intimidated to, mm-hmm. to bet into, into sports books. So we're, so we're really excited to, to build out and launch those products. I love that. That sounds amazing. And, you know, anybody that's in the sports betting field kind of, you know, understands the types of bets, but yeah, like when points bet come out with kind of what they're doing, I think it adds a, a level of intrigueness, you know, where I'm intrigued about what's going on and kind of, uh, I don't know, just gives a little fresh um, perspective to the sports betting landscape. So that sounds pretty cool. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that as, as it comes out and as you guys get down that path. So very cool, very cool. Well, what else? What else do you have for the audience? Any, uh, how, I guess, would they get a hold of you? If they, not, maybe not you or at least your company, if anybody's looking to work with you guys or um, just talk to you guys and hear what you have going on, how would they get a hold of you best? Yeah, of course. Well, everyone can email me right at steve at playboomsports.com. Uh, but I would say that, you know, for, for people looking to get more acquainted with, with Boom, you know, check out our products. So, so you know, our, our number one sort of product for our partners out in the market right now is NBC Sports Predictor. Uh, that's a product we launched a little over a year ago. Over a million people have played. Mm-hmm. Um, we also launched the official league gaming apps of NASCAR and the XFL. So NASCAR Finish Line and Play XFL. Um, and, you know, we'll be launching a lot of new products in, in the months ahead. So, so be on the lookout for that. That's pretty exciting. Very, very cool. Well, I really appreciate that. We'll put all the links uh, up in the show notes of this. Um, I don't want to keep you. I know you're a busy man, got a lot going on. Any last words for the audience before we uh, let you go here, Steve? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Hope everybody stays safe and looking forward to getting out there and and having fun and, and gambling soon. Yeah, absolutely. It'll come back soon and we'll be bigger and better than ever. This was Steve Murphy of Boom Sports. Hey, Steve, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, Until next time, take care. Thanks, Ryan. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of the Noob Sports Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our iTunes channel today. Plus, visit us at noobsports.com for more picks, previews, strategy, and news. That's K-N-U-P sports.com.